Hey guys, we're up again back today bringing another video for our weapon conversion series and today we're going to be covering all of the builds available for the Scorpion Evo 3A1 or the CX-9 as it's called in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So this was released just today here on August 3rd, just kind of dropped out of nowhere as part of the SOAP Operator Bundle as well as being able to be unlocked through Modern Warfare's multiplayer. However, it was bugged for a little bit so you were not able to progress towards unlocking it naturally. However, it seems like Raven has deployed a fix, which has fixed that. So we're going to go through all of the different conversions, or I guess we'll call them different variants of the Scorpion Evo 3 here in game, as well as show out some gameplay and then go into some real life information regarding the Scorpion Evo 3 A1 for our weapon conversion series. So let's go ahead and back out. Here's the final design for one of our variants here, this being the Scorpion Evo 3 A1. But first, I want to back out and we'll go to the warzone menu because for some reason in the modern warfare store here you can see there's no soap operator bundle here for some reason it doesn't show in the modern warfare store which is strange because it's a modern warfare weapon so we need to go back out to the warzone menu and here in the warzone store we see the soap operator bundle so this is available for 2400 cod points or 24 dollars in shop and you can see there obviously you're going to get the soap operator bundle, the soap operator with this, with the base skin, you can see there he has the CX-9 or the Scorpion Evo 3 available to him. He does come with three different operator unlocks for different skins. So you can see there we get the base that we already looked at. You have the Sky soap operator skin that you can see available. And then the next one here is going to be Over the Edge, which again is, is basically callback to that Modern Warfare 2 cliffhanger mission, I believe it was called where Soap and Roach are uh, outside climbing up that mountain, that iconic Modern Warfare 2 mission. So here's that skin available here. So you get all these and you just need to progress towards them. You can see the objectives here to unlock them. So that's something if you want to do. And then here's the CX-9 that comes with it. You can see we saw this as ground loot uh, way back one in season two with some minor attachment differences here. But here's the Modern Warfare weapon for the CX-9 or the Scorpion Evo 3 if you want to get your hands on it early. You can go ahead and get that. And you can see here what comes with the bundle. But we're not going to review the bundle in this particular video. What we're going to do is back out and go back to my Modern Warfare. And first off, to unlock the weapon. So if you're curious how to unlock this, first off, you need to go to your menu here. And you can see the CX-9. So basically to unlock this, get two long shot kills while using an SMG in five different matches. So you can back out during that. And again, like I said, the unlock criteria seem to be busted. Seems like it's fixed now. So I would recommend something... That's suitable for long range kills, something like the P90 here, the mow down blueprint with some different attachments. Definitely very, very dominant long range. You can use this almost like an AR. So that's probably the best way to do it. Get those two kills and then get out and do that five times and you should be all set. So let's go to our private matches here and we'll jump into our loadouts for the Scorpion Evo 3 and then we'll get into some gameplay and the real life information. So first off, we'll review the base Scorpion Evo 3 here. So. If we go ahead and look at this, what we'll do is strip this down to base. So here we have the base Scorpion Evo 3A1. And what we're going to do, again, just kind of modernize this at base. This is already the Scorpion Evo 3A1. So what we're going to do is just throw, for aesthetic purposes, we'll throw a monolithic suppressor on there for the sound suppression and the damage at range. Cons of the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. We'll leave the base barrel because at base, the barrel is the correct one we want for the A3 variant, or excuse me, the A1 variant. The laser, we can go ahead and throw something like a tack laser on. And then for the optic, we can do the aim op reflex or the aim point. We'll leave the base stock. For the ammunition, we'll go ahead and do that 30 round magazine. And you can see that's going to increase our magazine capacity from the 20 rounds of the 9 by 19 parabellum to 30 rounds. So that'll increase that. Cons are the aim round sight speed and the movement speed. Select that. And then we'll go ahead and just do a ranger foregrip here for the recoil control and the aim and stability. Cons again, ADS speed and the aim walking movement speed but we have that ads uh speed increase with the tack laser there so that'll be a good increase there so this at base here this is the scorpion evo 3 a1 evo 3 standing for basically the third iteration in this weapons history which we'll get into later in the video but this is basically the base scorpion evo 3 a1 kind of tacked out and modernized now one thing to note here just quickly we'll go through all of the attachments that are available so you can see there's no real special attachments for this weapon before we get into the other variants here you have just the base things that you would expect the barrels we'll look at because those are part of the the variants that we're going to be building but there's no specific optic that's special for this from cz and there's really stock options seem to be 
pretty uh, typical for what we see with a lot of the weapons. So nothing too crazy there. However, it does have that nice uh, CZ Scorpion and Slash Bren type design to it, which is cool to see. Perks, nothing new. Rear grips, again, nothing crazy here. It's all the same types of things we're looking for. At base, the pistol grip already is that of the Scorpion Evo 3A1. And then, like we said, the magazine options, you get the 30 round. You get the 9mm hollow point, which switches the weapon to 3 round burst. And multiplayer, that's going to be a 1 burst kill. And then you get the 50 round drum of the 9 by 19 Parabellum. And then for the underbarrel, again, nothing unique. You get the tactical foregrip, which has its own nice aesthetic design, as well as the commando has its own design to it as well, which is unique from other weapons. But overall, that's the only uh, thing specific to this weapon, minus the barrels, which we'll get into. So that's the scorpion evo 3a1 now let's go into the s1 carbine so s1 there's a couple different variants available for the scorpion evo 3 the s1 this is mainly the civilian variant of this in a carbine form so s1 standing for essentially select fire so this is not in real life it's not fully automatic however for the purpose of this we're going to kind of ignore that but this is kind of what they're modeling this after just so you understand what the the design is kind of based off of so we'll go ahead and Take a look at this. So this is our S1 carbine. So this is basically the Scorpion Evo 3A1 in carbine format, meaning a longer barrel. So we'll go ahead and throw the tactical suppressor on there. Again, just for aesthetic purposes, if you want the best in slot, obviously the monolithic is going to be your option there. Now for the barrel option here, we're going to go with the CX38. So there's two different builds for this. Now in real life, the carbine variant for the S1 is at 16.2 inches. So this one here, at, you can see in the description, at 412 millimeter barrel. So that get, brings us right to 16.2 inches. So that's the, the correct one we would want there. However, you also have this other option here, which is the first barrel attachment, the CX-38E. So this extends it out to, you can see, 445 millimeters. So it extends it a little bit longer than it would be in real life. And you can see the drastic differences there. Same handguard, however, the barrel itself is a lot longer. So you can see that difference. This is not a real life barrel length at all to my knowledge however this is a really good option to equip in the game because it's going to give you kind of your best recoil control it looks like even better if we go ahead and select that even better than one of the uh integral suppressed ones here it's going to give you a little bit less uh a little bit better accuracy actually than the integrally suppressed one so cx38 here again this kind of is a very unique handguard here you can see it's fitted with picatinnies that are mounted on the left and right as well as top and bottom and you have a different colored handguard here which is interesting we'll get into that in a second laser will skip out i put on the integral hybrid here the leopold hammer just again it looks really cool and i am a big fan of this optic so we can toggle from that 3.25 to the top mounted delta which you'll see in the gameplay we'll leave the base stock 30 round magazine again just to increase it from 20 however i would highly recommend if you're playing with this uh, just to put a 50 round drum on there make it much more uh, easier to use just, you'll see in the gameplay when I use this build in particular as well as the other ones the reloading is what kills you with this weapon because of the high rate of fire and then the range of foregrip here again we have that nice mag pull uh, foregrip there it looks really nice that vertical foregrip looks really good you have the other options here however this thing is definitely going to help you control the recoil very well in my opinion and playing with it so that's the S1 carbine however obviously it's not select fire to single fire um, unless you actually manually select fire. This is still full auto. However, it is in the carbine length at the 16.2 inches versus the base 7.7 inches of the base variant that we went over here being the Scorpion Evo 3A1. Now, one thing about the handguard, it looks very strange for conversion-wise as we'll cover this a little bit more. But the handguard, you can see it's a different color than the base Scorpion there. So they went with kind of, it leads me to believe that they were almost looking to make another conversion for the CZ Bren here in the game. However, there's no caliber conversion to turn this into an AR type rifle in the 556 by 45 or the 762 by 51 millimeter. So interesting design with the barrel lengths here. Again, very different from what the S1 carbine length barrels are, which in real life are M-lock handguards. So this is more geared towards what I would expect to see for a conversion from like a Bren. However, for proprietary purposes, so they don't have to pay for the rights. They obviously switched up the handguard there. However, I was surprised that there's no caliber conversion to turn this into an AR format weapon with the caliber conversion. But that's kind of what it's going for, again, with the CX-38 as well as the CX-38E, which is going to be the even longer barrel format. Same handguard, just a little bit longer barrel there, extending it out a few more inches. 
So that is our S1 carbine. Now the Scorpion Micro. So this is going to bring it down to a shorter barrel length in 4.4 inches, I believe is what this comes out to. It doesn't say specifically what it is here in game. However, this one comes with a built-in angled foregrip, which again, this is kind of a unique design specific to the barrels for this weapon. This is going to give us the aim down sight speed, movement speed, and the recoil control because we have that built-in grip. Cons here, the damage at range, and the bullet velocity. And you'll see the aim down sight speed speed with this weapon when we get into the gameplay is extremely fast so this thing is going to be really good to use especially if you were to throw on that 50 round drum go ahead and throw on attack laser we'll go to pbx hollow sight again just for aesthetic purposes and then in real life this thing in the micro pistol format or the micro format would have a different type stock mainly a folding brace which we don't have that option here the base stock itself folds to the right hand side However, we can go ahead and throw a telescopic option on here too. You can see this one's just extended out. This one would be extended in, which we'll cover. Or you could just go with the base variant of the stock, which again, it's not the folding brace, but it is a folding stock option, which would fold to the right, which would be base, the base barrel for the A1 variant of the Scorpion Evo 3. So that's an option there. Again, for this one, we'll just go with the CXFA, which is going to give us the aim walk and movement speed and the aim bound sight speed. The cons here are the aiming stability but that's a completely subjective attachment. Skip out on the perk, the rear grip, and then the final attachment here, fifth and final, will be the ammunition. Again, up in that from the 20 by 9 by 19 parabellum to the 30 rounds of 9 by 19. Again, if you're using this and trying to be successful, not trying to follow the real life builds, definitely recommend the 50 round drum magazine for this one. But that is our Scorpion micro build with that 4.5 or 4.4 inch barrel there. Again, really nice design, nice and compact. Your your movement speed with this and your aim down sight speed is extremely fast. You'll see that in the gameplay. Now we have the integral carbine. So again, this is the same type of length as the uh, S1 carbine that we went over. However, you can see the barrel changes here. Now this is a completely fictional made up barrel here. It's supposed to be an integrally suppressed barrel. You can see how it kind of follows suit. It's basically an extension of what the base barrel is here. If I go ahead and deselect, you'll see the base barrel. So it's basically the same barrel, just extended to have that integrally suppressed suppressor in there so you can see that this is going to give us the damage at range the recoil control the bullet velocity and the sound suppression the cons here are going to be the aim down sight speed and the movement speed so we'll select that we'll just do a standard red dot option here for precision sight picture it'll only slow down our aim down sight speed slightly then we have the cxmm buttstock here for added aim and stability and the cons being the aim walking movement speed and again this is kind of subjective for the real life attachments as well because you the base stock that comes with it can be the same one too so you can go ahead and use that attachment elsewhere if you really wanted to and that could be used for a uh, grip or even attack laser as well and then we have the 30 round magazine again increasing the ammo count and then the commando foregrip however with this i would still recommend the ranger foregrip over this the ranger foregrip seems to give you the best control uh the recoil on this is still not bad but the vertical grips seem to make it a little bit easier to manage so this is our integrally suppressed s1 carbine and now again in real life it's still like i said an mlock handguard and this would be kind of a it wouldn't be an osprey suppressor like we have here it would be more of a rounded suppressor that would be fitted inside of the handguard so this is a fictional barrel however it does look pretty cool and it is reminiscent of what we see with the apc9 as well we'll go ahead and back out and then we'll go to our integral integrally suppressed micro variant so we cover the scorpion micro this is basically the same thing however integrally suppressed barrel option now again this is kind of a real this is really basically a real life option as well mainly for the s1 s2 series which is select fire so this is basically a micro pistol uh with in real life again would have that folding brace however here we see the cx23 which we reviewed already now the cx23 s just meaning suppress so this has that integral monolithic suppressor the pros here are going to be the sound suppression, the aim down sight speed, and the cons are the bullet velocity. So we'll select that. Now we have the just standard EOTech combat holographic here. The cons here are the aim down sight speed, which again, it's just such a, a small build here that that's not going to hurt us at all. And then the stock option, we have that collapsed butt stock here, and that's going to give us the movement speed and the aim down sight speed because in real life, the pistol variants. Uh, if you do have it configured as a pistol, typically you're either going to have no stock or you'll have a folding brace on there as well to be compliant with some of the ATF rules. So this thing will help you out there. The cons of the image stability and the recoil control. Then you have the 30 round magazine again in the commando foregrip. However, you'll see in the gameplay, it's all over the place. I would still recommend the Ranger is going to give you much better control with that vertical muzzle climb on this. But 
This is an integrally suppressed barrel, so obviously it cancels out your option for a suppressor or any type of barrel design or muzzle de device there to be hooked on that. So this is our integrally suppressed Scorpion Evo 3 Micro, really in the pistol format of the S2. So the civilian variant in real life, it's still only select fire to single fire. And then what we'll go ahead and do is back out and we'll go to our Warzone build. So this is just kind of the recommended Warzone build that I foresee kind of taking off. Uh, this is going to give you the integrally suppressed barrel that we reviewed. So you get all the pros and cons there. You have the 5 milliwatt laser, the collapsed buttstock there, 50 round drum, and the Merc Forger. However, I was not a really big fan of this. Used it in the very end of the gameplay. Wasn't a huge fan. I feel like hip firing with this thing, although it may be uh, beneficial, the rate of fire is so fast that you really, I feel like you're better off almost aiming. So personally, I would probably go with a Ranger foregrip. Go with, you can keep the five milliwatt if you're gonna potentially be up close and personal. Otherwise, swap it out for attack laser. And personally, I would probably just get rid of the uh, stock option. Go for an optic of some sorts there and use it kind of like this. So that's our five round. This is kind of what I would personally use. However, I'm not a big hip fire person, so you could definitely build that out differently if you wanted to. Now, one other thing I want to look at is kind of the uh, the APC-9 or the ISO compared to the CX-9, the Scorpion EVO 3. So you can see the similarities here. This is the APC-9 or the ISO with that angrily suppressed nightshade barrel. Again, very similar type of uh, design and look here that they went with. So it's almost as if they kind of recycled this and obviously just kind of changed it to look more like the Scorpion, what it would look like, the fictional barrel. Still looks really good, but you can see these two weapons built out uh, with the same attachment. The Scorpion just looks really, really sleek too, and it does have a faster rate of fire, which is nice. So those two weapons, very similar. However, the Scorpion e Evo 3 definitely has a faster rate of fire, it seems like, although they're both very, very fast. Uh, the Scorpion Evo 3 definitely appears to be faster just from my initial testing. Now, Jumping in before we get into the gameplay here, the Scorpion Evo 3A1. If you look at this, just some design details on this weapon. So at base, we have Picatinny's on all four sides, meaning the bottom of the handguard left and right. And then they have the top uh, railed cover there. So it's not just on the handguard, it's full length Picatinny rail. So we can mount optics. We have the, the tactical laser mounted there on a candid mount. We have the Ranger foregrip on the bottom, Picatinny. And then some other things here to note are we have the ambidextrous select fire. So you can see there right above the pistol grip, we have the select fire on both the left and the right hand side. We have the paddled magazine release there on the bottom of the pistol grip at the back of the bag well right there. You see just like an AK type design, that paddled magazine release. And then we have an ambidextrous bolt release there too on the left and the right side, right above really where that paddled magazine release is there. You see it on both sides is the bolt release. So... Uh, we also have, you can see the select fire options. If I go ahead and back out and look at the rear grips, we can get a better look at this. So it looks like it's not quite up to spec with what the real life is. We see safe on the far left, single fire, and then what appears to be just kind of a square, which is strange. It should be, and then we have the three round burst. So it should be a uh, single, the three round burst, and then a full auto option. So they just kind of threw in a square there. I'm not really, this is obviously... Uh, they did that for a reason, not sure why, but that's a little bit mixed up, obviously. the in the in Right there, you can see that's ambidextrous. We have the pedal magazine release underneath the behind the mag well, underneath the pistol, or the trigger guard. And then we have the bolt release there on the, on the right above that. You can see that that's also ambidextrous. So that's our Scorpion Evo 3A1. Here we also have the release there on the back right-hand side of the buttstock, right where, it, uh, you, where the, the buttstock itself connects to the weapon, you see that little lever or that button, you push that and this thing would fold to the right hand side. And then you have that little, what looks like the trigger under the back bottom there. So that trigger would extend this piece out further and then you could probably even raise up the cheek guard there potentially as well. So that's the Scorpion Evo 3 A1. And again, my favorite build, to be honest, before we jump into the gameplay, would definitely be this thing here. And we'll just swap out and throw the 50 round drum mag this thing's a lot of fun to use. You can even throw the CZE on there, or the CXZ, excuse me. This thing seems to be a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun using this just against bots. So definitely a good option there as well. Let me know down below what you guys think of that. We jump into the gameplay here, just running this on crashed against bots. So it's just me solo against some, some bots, just trying to get a good uh, gameplay here for you guys with each of these variants that we covered. 
as well as you'll see me swap out a few attachments here and there. Now, the one thing I didn't use was the hollow point rounds. I did play with those myself. It's really nothing special. It's the same attachment we've seen available on, I believe, two or three of the submachine guns now. It's just going to switch that to a three-round burst instead of the two like we see with uh, the LWRC SMG 45. So it's going to switch it to a three-round burst. And again, in multiplayer, at least, in the realism mode I was playing against bots, it's going to be a one-burst kill, obviously. Three-round burst for the hollow point. It's going to deal heavy damage. However, you only have ten rounds. So you only have uh, uh, three total bursts, ba basically a full burst of three rounds. And then you have the one round. So very interesting. Or actually, it's twelve rounds. Excuse me. So you have four total bursts of that, which makes it definitely viable if you're trying to use it that way. However, the Scorpion with the high rate of fire seems to be best suited for fully auto 9x19 Parabellum. So, real information here about the Scorpion EVO 3A1. So, this has been in service since 2009 when it was first introduced. So, the E3, like I said in the beginning of the video, is kind of a uh, designation which notes that this is the third iteration or third generation of CZ's small arms. So, started way back with the Scorpion uh, VZ-61, which fired not even a 9x19 caliber. Then they had their second iteration, which switched it to 9x19. And that was the Scorpion VZ-9, I believe it was called. And then we have now the Scorpion EVO-3, which again is 9x19 Parabellum. Now you'll remember the, the original Scorpion from COD-4 or Modern Warfare Remastered. That Scorpion SMG was the first iteration of what was developed now into the Scorpion EVO-3. So that, that was the Scorpion VZ-9. 61, I believe it was in that particular game. It could have also been the 9mm, however, I'm doing that off memory. I don't really remember what particular version it was in that game. Now, the Scorpion Evo 3, again, like I said, it's been in service since 2009 through present. It's a weapon of the Czech Republic, so our buddy Big Mike, uh, very familiar with this weapon, Big Mike MW. Uh, the types here is a pistol caliber carbine or a submachine gun, which is the A1. The pistol caliber carbine is the S1S2 series, which I said is the select fire to only semi-auto um, for the civilian market and to go along with ATF and import export uh, protocols. So the been in service since 2009, used by mainly the Czech Republic is where it's been manufactured. Variants are the Evo 3 S1 as well, and that's going to be, like I said, the S1 and the S2 are the civilian uh, single fire options. So the mass of the A3 overall is going to be 2.77 kilograms or 6.10 pounds with a full magazine, that being a 20 round magazine of the 9x19. The length of this weapon is going to be 26.37 inches. That's going to be with the stock unfolded, so it would not be folded. It's not extended, but it's not folded. And then when the stock is folded, it goes from 26.37 down to 16.14 inches. Now, the barrel length, as we discussed, is going to be the base A3 here is going to be 7.71 inches for the pistol or the carbine. And then for the rifle variant, is going to be 16 point two so there's a little bit varied there again it's 412 millimeters or 196 millimeters the a3 i believe falls into that 7.7 for the pistol carbine uh length however i'm actually i believe i may be incorrect it may be the 16.2 for the for the a1 but correct me if i'm wrong down below the width for this is going to be 2.36 inches and the height is going to be 10.31 inches Cartridge is going to be the 9x19 Parabellum, as well as it can fire the 9x21mm. The action for this weapon is going to be a direct blowback. The rate of fire in real life is going to be 1,150 rounds per minute, so a very high rate of fire. And this may, in fact, I haven't tested against the other high rate of fire weapons, that being the Vector and the ISO. However, it's going to fall right behind the Vector in terms of rate of fire. So the Vector, I believe, in game is around 1,200 rounds per minute. Um... This seems to be right between that and the ISO. Muzzle velocity is going to be in real life 370 meters per second with a speed system of the 10, 20, 30 detachable box magazines as well as the 50 round drum magazine. Now it also has a 100 round beta C drum magazine which is compatible with this thing which is insane. Uh, thank God they didn't add that to the game because that would have been pretty messy but that's all the magazine options for this. Sights, it has the Picatinny rails with the built-in optics, which you would have seen there with the original test firing. I, I'll show a little bit of that. Uh, just the base iron sights, as well as you see some of that in the gameplay as well. And you have the backup iron sights there, as well as some different variants. I believe the S2 uh, micro pistol comes with Magpul MBUS sights as well, that flip up there. So, very interesting weapon. Again, the... Uh, 
base weapon has the semi-automatic three-round burst and fully auto, while the S1 S2 series switches only from safe to semi-automatic, as well as some of the options offered by the Ameri by CZ America or US offer for the carbine variants, the M-Lock handguard, like we discussed in the video. So let me know down below what you guys think of this. Have you been able to unlock it yet? Like I said, Raven deployed a fix later on today which allowed this weapon tracking or the unlocks to track. So you, if you were having trouble with the tracking earlier, it should be showing up now in your uh, unlock criteria, as well as if you had bought the model previously, I know there were some issues not being able to select SOAP as an operator, not being able to select the CX-9. So hopefully it seems like they had fixed all that. I didn't buy the bundle, so I'm not sure, and I'm gonna try to lock, unlock this later on. But hopefully that fixes everything. Let me know down below what you guys think of this. Weapon, the Scorpion Evo 3A1. Again, a really nice weapon. Some cool different variants here. Obviously, you can see a lot where they uh, didn't want to pay for the copyrights and kind of made up their own barrels for some of this. But it does look pretty cool. And again, like I said, some of those CX barrels really reminded me of what I would have thought would have been conversions for the CZ Bren in some caliber. However, it looks like they didn't include that. Unfortunately, I think that would have been a really cool option to convert this to a Bren assault rifle. That would have been a lot of fun. But let me know down below what you guys think. I'll leave my links to social media down below in the description for Buffner Gaming here on Twitter. You can find that down there. I believe it's Buffner Gaming 1 as well as on Instagram. We also have the link to the Discord down there as well. We have a really good community there if you want to join up and talk about modern firearms, modern warfare. Battlefield 2042, things like that, as well as I have the Twitch link down below too, as well. We'll be picking up live streams again here later on uh, this summer, end of the summer, as we get into fall. We'll be picking up live streams over there again as well, so be sure to subscribe or turn on notifications over there. If you're liking the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and make sure your notifications are on by hitting that bell. That'll keep you notified every time a new video drops here, whether it's Modern Warfare, Warzone, or Battlefield 2042, or see the other games that I also enjoy covering. So that's it for this video. Again, the CX-9 dropping today. I'm just sitting here kind of waiting for the RAL LMG or that 6338 normal Magnum machine gun from the next generation squad weapon. I'm really excited for that. I'm a little bit bummed that that didn't drop with this today. So if, this, if the Scorpion took this long to drop, uh, hopefully it doesn't take another five months for the RAL LMG to drop. Again, we got both these originally in season two. We haven't seen the rally yet. I'm really holding out hope that we get that sooner rather than later. However, it seems like we probably won't get that till the end of Season 5, unfortunately, just looking at the weapons that they are going to have coming at the beginning of Season 5. So hopefully that comes sooner rather than later. However, we're probably going to have to wait a few more months for that weapon to be introduced into Battle Warfare and Warzone. Let me know down below what you guys think. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming with all the CX-9 or the Scorpion Evo 3 weapon conversions. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.